Hello, my name is Milan Kara. I am a physician and I am the medical lead of the Vancouver General Hospital Smoking Cessation Clinic. What I'm going to talk to you today about is the importance of quitting smoking to reduce the risk and reduce the progression of COPD. Smoke can come from a variety of sources. We typically think of the use of traditional cigarettes as the most important source, but smoke can also come from the marijuana joint, it can come from the use of the hookah pipe, and it can also come from traditional wood-burning stoves. Secondhand smoke can cause COPD and can cause the worsening of the disease. But beyond secondhand smoke is thirdhand smoke. This is where the smoker exposes the objects within their environment to smoke. For example, carpets, furniture, even clothes and hair. And the chemicals from smoke can be released from these inanimate objects and can cause harm to those who are exposed. This all sounds alarming, but the good news is that it's actually never too late to quit smoking and the health benefits of quitting can be achieved at whatever point an individual stops. Now, stopping smoking is not easy. And the reason it's not easy is that tobacco smoke contains nicotine, the addictive component of cigarettes. But we now know that there are strategies which have been shown to increase the likelihood of success. And those strategies include counseling or strategic advice from a healthcare professional, and also stop smoking medications. We're here to help you to begin this journey towards a smoke-free future. One way to begin the process is to pick a quit date, engage with your family doctor or another trusted healthcare professional, get access to stop smoking medications, and then begin to work on the environment. So thinking about the triggers that you may be surrounded by, for example, others who smoke, places where you may have smoked for many years. These are the kinds of things that we need to change. So making the environment one that is gonna be supportive of quitting smoking is a good place to start. Getting rid of ashtrays, for example, a very good first step. And it's also important to remember that as of recently, we now have coverage of smoking cessation medications in this province through the BC Smoking Cessation Program that allows every individual 12 weeks of free nicotine replacement therapy per calendar year. If you have access to a smoking cessation group in your area, this is another way in which to find the kind of support and strategic advice that may help to improve the likelihood of success. Other local resources include the Vancouver General Hospital Smoking Cessation Clinic. This can easily be accessed by calling 604-875-4800 and then selecting option two. We also have Quit Now Services, which offers a variety of forms of support on the telephone, online, through texting services. This can be accessed through 1-800-QUIT-NOW. And remember that when you start the process, there will be successes, which you should celebrate, but having slips and relapses is a very common part of the process. And rather than giving up when one of these events occurs, it's far more effective to use those slips or relapses as a learning experience to promote the likelihood of success moving forward. So to sum up, smoking is harmful and can cause COPD or make COPD worse. Smoking also affects people around the smoker through secondhand and thirdhand smoke. To effectively quit smoking, you need a plan and a support system, and ideally the use of stop smoking medications. And last of all, try and make that quit attempt as soon as possible. Thank you for joining us today, and remember that there is more information on smoking and COPD in a pamphlet that will come with this video.